Let's start with the 55-gallon uh, planted tank. The fish in this tank are doing very well. You can see the uh, some of the neon, some of the neon blue dwarf rainbows. That's a red tail rasbora right there. I had several of them at one point. I'm going to add some more rasboras. I love the way they school. I'm also going to add some more rummy nose. Rummy nose are some of my favorite fish. Beautiful with those stripes on the tail. Bright red nose. I do use these little clips from Zoomed to give the fish uh, some cucumber or zucchini. I want to add some more neon, so maybe that'll help them to come out more. They tend to hide in the plants. There's probably about five of them in here. There's one you can make out just behind the uh, piece of wood back there. I brought some of the quarries over from the 20 gallon rimless, and so now there are more quarries in this tank. More quarry cats of different variety. I know they like, they like hanging out in groups. They seem to be happier in groups. There's one of the neons right there. There's a quarry back there. You can see them through the plants below the cherry barb. My big fat cherry barb. I love the way this uh, Anubius has turned into a bit of a, a bloom, sort of an Anubius arrangement there at the top of the wood. I'm also using one of these little easy planters from uh, Aquarium Co-op. These lemon tetras just seem to hang out. They don't really swim around that much. They just tend to kind of hang out in a little pack. There's about five of them in there. Still have some of this hornwort that I, I'm constantly thinning out. And as you can see, that temple plant absolutely loves it in this tank. It's a temple plant I picked up just recently. You can see it right there. I love the broad leaves on it. See some of the neons hanging out over here by the heater. There are lots of, of these pagoda snails in here now because I, I brought over all the pagoda snails that were in the 29 gallon that I put the red tear in. I didn't want to risk the red tear destroying the uh, pagoda snails that were in there. So I brought over a lot of them. You can see them hanging out all over the place in here. Different sizes. Certainly different, uh, different coloration. You see one back there. There's one here trying to climb up the wall. Really cool snails. There's also nearite in here. It's a 55 gallon. Looks like that snail is on top of a uh, of a of a little wafer. I put one of those little catfish pleco wafers in there, algae wafer. Looks like he's going to town on it. About three of them, three of the pagodas in there. There's a live bear in here. This is the only live bear. I brought him over from the 20 gallon rimless because I was going to tear that tank down. But that plan was derailed. Let's work our way cl clockwise around the room. Here in the 90, 90 gallon rimless. Things are going great. Love a red spotted gold severum. Beautiful fish. Doing much better since I took out the red shoulder who was harassing him. The little albino acaras are all doing great. They seem to hang together in a group of four. And then you have this one sort of rebel that hangs off to the side. It's always been that way ever since I got him. You have this one that hangs out by himself and four that hang out together. Not sure why that is. I also have a standard Akara or a standard Hekali. 
Still have the Buenos Aires Tetras in here. They don't really seem to be that nippy. You can see the big Congos back there looking great. Congo Tetras. This plant does need to be taken out. I'll probably take it out and drop it in some water with bleach. Let it sit for 24 hours, then give it a good rinse. Maybe let it sit in water with a little bit of water conditioner. That's the way I uh, maintain my plants, my plastic plants, in tanks where I can't have live plants. Electric blue okara, again, another fish that's doing better because the aggressive electric blue okara was taken out. We go around this tank. Over here you see the, uh, the red tear, and the red tear is, as you know, temporarily living in this 29 gallon. And he'll be in there until I can get a, uh, a larger tank set up, which I plan on doing because there's a female that's going to be sent over by the same person that gave me this fish and that's my friend Whip, and he's going to be bringing over or sending over a female. Now that whole project it depends on opening up this space right here. So breaking down these two tanks or putting them somewhere else and then opening up this space for a 60 gallon acrylic tank. But I was going to tear this tank down, but then I saw that I had a few little plecos in here, so I said okay, Let's let the plecos put on a little bit, a little bit of size, because they're almost impossible to catch when they're the, the size of a comma, right? But then, as a as a few days went by, I realized that I had a lot more than just a couple plecos. I have actually probably two dozen or three dozen plecos in here. I mean, they're just everywhere. You can see Papa Pleco, you can see his whiskers there in the cave. That's Papa Pleco in there, if you can make him out. So this tank will just continue to, uh, I guess, operate for a little while longer. Let those Plecos take on some more size. You can see him working on a uh, little, a little Pleco wafer down there. Looks like a couple albinos on there. I lifted up this little uh, almond leaf here, and there are about another 20 plecos under it. They like hanging out under it. So I'm going to have to do something. Probably give away a bunch of plecos. I still have a baby, what I think might be a rainbow fish in here. But this tank is going to get torn down, so I may just put that rainbow fish in with the plecos. I doubt they'll go after him. This tank is rebounding nicely. I'm about ready to remove the uh, activated carbon. Any heavy metals or toxins that are in here have been removed, no doubt, by running uh, a very strong flow of water through activated, activated charcoal, which is in that, in that uh, internal filter. There are a couple test plecos in here, one stuck on the wall there on the side, and there's one over here at the entrance of the cave. And those plecos are doing great, which tells me that this tank can support life now. So I'll probably be adding some fish to this tank, I suspect. Some neon, some rummy noses, some rasboras, some fish that I want to add to the 55-gallon uh, planted. I'll go ahead and quarantine them in this, in this tank because I do feel this tank is now ready, ready to support life. This tank has a lot of baby pagoda snails. You can see one there on the glass if you can make them out. Little baby pagoda. There's a lot of little babies in this tank. As well as some larger pagoda snails like that one right there. All of my pagoda snails, and there must be about 30 of them or more, started with one pagoda snail that I bought and it just started it started propagating, started reproducing all by, all by him herself. <laughs> a 
Let's go over here to the uh, 300. 300 gallon African cichlid tank. These fish are doing fine. I do want to add some more fish to this tank, especially after removing some of the decor. It looks pretty empty. The Kwingi's been asserting himself, trying to be the boss. He's a big, heavy fish, so he can be the boss if he wants to be. The trout doesn't seem to care. The trout was the boss at one time. And I'm really kind of surprised that the uh, Bucochromus uh, Rhodesia yellow or the Fusco, both very big, heavy fish, aren't trying to be the boss. I want to show you that Malawi hawk. Look at this uh, turquoise hat. Beautiful fish. Actually, a protomelus. If you look there, you can see the that hawk. Just a crazy looking fish. I do have a uh, an algae scrubber on this tank and I'll go ahead and give you an update on that at some point. It has finally started to develop algae. It can take two, three weeks before algae shows up. But algae is showing up on it and once I can get a good concentration of algae in there, that algae will consume nitrates, pull nitrates out of this tank. It's on the, uh, it's on the sump below the aquarium. Let's go over to the uh, 210, 210 gallon. I've made some changes in this tank, added some thicker plants. You can see this one here, one of those plants from that company, Elite Cichlids, who are no longer in existence unfortunately. I brought the cave up to the front. This is the cave that the uh, Salvini used to hang out in. I think she might be too big to get in it. So I might be bringing over a bigger cave. I have a bigger cave I can put in this tank. I know the Salvini likes being in a cave. But I move the rocks around, and if you remember that uh, fire mouth was very protective of a rock formation that was in the middle of the aquarium, but I went ahead and removed that rock formation. He's still hanging out around the same place, the geos, the geos are just camera hogs. There's a chocolate. Don't see them too often, they usually hang out near the back of the tank, in the shadows. Makes them a little hard to see sometimes. I got bit by one once. They do have some pretty sharp little teeth. Albino Oscar. Little green tear over here. Very shy. This green tear is very shy. Here's my red shoulder Severum. Showing a lot more red in the 210 gallon. Someone said that those stripes were showing up because he's under stress. I actually call them stress bars. <laughs> Doesn't seem too stressed out. Might be a little bit intimidated by the change and the size of the tank mates. That's entirely possible. But he's eating well, relatively active. About as active as he was in the 90 gallon. The big big vieja back there, probably pushing 12 inches. There's that little electric blue Acara. That electric blue Acara seems to be doing fine in this tank, even though he's a lot smaller. But I don't see any damage on him at all. Fins and body all look good. And get him in focus here. There he is. Great looking fish, but was a little bit too aggressive on the other electric blue car, so I had to pull him out. A big Oscar. 
Red Tiger Oscar. Hey, are you under stress? Well, maybe so, huh? Well, the fire mouth goes after anybody that goes near the exact middle of the tank. A little bit of a jerk, but doesn't really damage anybody, it just chases them off. Someone asked me about the, uh, p the, uh, the fin nips on the back of the geo. The geos actually chase each other. They've always chased each other. Nobody's harder on them than they are on each other. This plant was added, and as you can see, the rocks have been rearranged. But I do have different plants in this tank now. Overall, I think it looks great. And all things considered, I think the fish are doing fine. So there's a full fish room update. We did one complete lap of the fish room. Hope you, uh, you enjoyed that and certainly share your tips, your ideas, uh, everything else down below. I do try and read as many comments as I can. And uh, if you'd like the channel, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell. And if you are subscribed, verify that you are still subscribed because I am getting reports from, from folks that YouTube unsubscribed them. I don't know why but check and find out, make sure that you're still subscribed. If you'd like to support the channel further, consider becoming a member of the Garage Gang, a Patreon monthly supporter. It starts for as little as $3 a month. Helps out quite a bit, actually. And if you'd like to uh, join me and a great group of fish keepers, we have a live stream every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. It's called the uh, Cichlids and Coffee live stream, and it's a lot of fun about... Uh, Oh, I don't know, on average, about maybe about 100 fish keepers get together and we talk about everything. Lighting, f food, substrate, decor, fish, everything, whatever comes up in the chat. So join us on Saturday for 11 a.m. Central Time, that's noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And if you'd like, uh, if you'd like some more tips on fish keeping, uh, check out this playlist up here, My Best Tips. And if you would like to subscribe, Hit me in the mug down there and you'll be subscribed to the channel. Okay? Thank you for tuning in, my friends. You're the best.